Open Core the basic way. So you have Open Core up and running. Great! Let's go and dive deeper to the secrets of Open Core. The magic lies in the config.plist located in the hidden EFI partition inside the OC folder. Warning! Every undocumented change in the config.plist file could end in a system that will not boot up properly. With this in view, we highly suggest that you do not manipulate the config.plist file unless you are a very advanced user. Please follow our suggestions only. They have been proven to work properly in our classic Mac Pros. If you are an advanced user of Open Core, feel free to refer the manual and change the config.plist but always at your own risk. Open Core is a very powerful tool, and you can change the entire behavior of your classic Mac Pro by editing some lines in the config.plist. Most users are using Open Core to achieve the bootpicker screen and hardware acceleration, but it is also widely used to update your native unsupported Mac with modern operating systems like Catalina and Big Sur. Apple stopped supporting the operating system with 10.14, Mojave, and does not let you install any Mac OS beyond Mojave on your classic Mac Pros. Others have devised methods of installing newer operating systems, for example, DOSDoot. But this system has some limitations such as installing updates as the operating system evolves. OpenCore is the alternate method that has been devised to continue and has the added benefit of showing a boot picker screen of your non-Apple video card. It should also be noted that depending on your video card, it can also enable hardware acceleration. The config.plist file contains a section named emulate. There's a flag written to the NVRAM which tells macOS that it is running in a native Mac environment or maybe in a virtual machine. A Catalina installation, for example, will not start. It is no longer supported. Your classic Mac is on a compatible blacklist inside the macOS Catalina installer. So by using OpenCore, we check macOS that he is not a native machine but OpenCore emulates a virtual machine. Let's have a look how we do this trick. Open Clover Configurator and mount the hidden EFI partition as you do already when you install the OpenCore extension. Confirm with your system password. Always make a backup copy of your config.plist and save it in the same folder or another location on your hard drive. You will find the config.plist, open it by right click and choose text edit or any other word processing app. In my case, I prefer to use text wrangler. Please do not use Clover Configurator for the changes, even it is suggested by macOS. Clover Configurator was developed by the Hackintosh community and is normally used in PCs to emulate macOS computer. It is highly dangerous to use, otherwise for our actual real Macs. Once again, I highly suggest that you do not experiment with both the config.plist file and Clover Configurator program. The emulate key I mentioned earlier starts at line 164. You find two sections inside the key. The first entry does have a letter C between the A's, while the second just contains a lot of A's. Select the whole string of CPU ID 1 data, all the A's with a C, and copy it to your clipboard. Replace the value of CPU ID 1 mask, all the A's in a row with the clipboard value. The result should look like this. There is another small change that must also be done by scrolling further down the file and find this section in the config.plist file. The section is named Platform Info and start in line 381. Find the key called Update SM BIOS and change the value from true to false. The original value true is part of a deeper change. For now, we don't need it to save the edited config.plist and reboot your Mac. Warning, as long as the emulate flag is set to this state, your processor is not going to an energy saving mode. It always runs at full frequency and could lead to higher temperatures and fan noise. You're now able to install Catalina, for example, it will appear as a native macOS update, system preferences, software update. When you have finished the Catalina installation, it highly suggested to set the emulate flag back to its normal state. Reverse the aforementioned processes in the config.plist file. You can change everything back or just trash the edited config.plist and rename the copy you made before. That original file should be considered your base file. In the future, we'll be producing more explanations regarding Big Sur. That's it! Of course, I'm always available when I'm online for any personal assistance. And the video is basically self-explanatory. Once again, thank you for your support.